mind can I run this race? It's playtime, I'm gonna crush your face. This is not a fucking face. Hey guys, I know you feel that face. Roll with that until you see my face. Rise and form a thick layer of fog at midnight. There's a time and a place to kill it. I spill it. Leak documents from a flaming tongue. Rappers act so saintly, but not on the gold you were baking, cuz. And now they catch the aroma. Wonder what the kid is baking up. Had a little secret ingredient through need to get something for waking up. My flow was caffeine and I'm the black king of spades. I'm a smaller card for that scream you hear is mad heat. I am the daddy of cracking the bones of the flashiest chic. No fucks given. As I grow up in a robust prison, everything I think I need is already given. For some reason, I am hardly living. Physical needs are what can't be controlled. Give a kid candy. Take away his soul. Ah, oh, I love this new song from a friend of mine. How's everybody else doing? I don't think we need this now. Good stuff, good stuff. Welcome all, Greg Steden. Thank you so much for tuning in, buddy. How are you going? And uh, Gondlape, thank you so much for tuning in. How's everyone doing right there? It's midweek, guys. Let's see what we've got in store. Michael Capenta. Thank you so much, man, for tuning in. My name is Prosper Taruvinga, by the way, guys. If this is the first time you are on the Lunch and Learn, you're welcome. Brigitte, thank you so much for tuning in. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Great. Now, for those that know what this show is about, uh, bear with me while I introduce this to other people that are not aware what we do and how it's all done. See, I believe that every um, online business or every person that's in the online space uh, should have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I also believe that if you're running a business online, you should be able to create uh, for and relate to those people you're going to be taking money off of. So essentially every single day we sit around here for 30 minutes where we talk about the four step system that's designed to help you market, uh, brand and package your services so that you can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Phil Forster, thank you so much for tuning in. Mike Blackenship, thank you so much for tuning in. So basically, also, if this is the first time you, you are around, um, I lead a team of uh, digital marketing experts um, that help small businesses like yours, essentially through digital marketing strategies. Now, Robert says, Hi, Prosper was an intense um, music. You liked it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Robert, for tuning in, by the way. I didn't realize you were on. And um, what I do personally for you is I will help you create and um, create an online footprint that is designed um, you know, for you to actually make profit and enjoy working in that business. Now, Bruna Martins, welcome to the show. This is the first time I've seen this name. If you've been around, that's fine. If not, that's all good. Now, if you're watching this show uh, in post-production, you're also welcome. Can you just type in where you are tuning in from? Because my... Um, yeah, my ethos around these videos is to actually inspire you to do things that um, inspire you yourself. Now, guys, we all know what's happening. Uh, we are all on the internet to either connect with our loved ones or to actually make a business or to, um, you know, um, yeah, make a profit. But most of us are using Facebook as the base of our work and um, if you are paying attention to what is actually happening Facebook might actually be stopping your content from reaching your customers as we speak all right um, this is not something that's new uh, people that are well versed with what has been happening have been gearing towards shifting their audiences to either a list or shifting their audiences to either their websites, shifting their audiences to other platforms where there's not going to be any disturbances, um, you know, with, with the Facebook algorithm. And also some people that are way smarter than us um, have been pounding and telling us that if you can shift your activities to a private profile, you get more reach, um, you know, within the, the, the news feed. All right. So, this is something that is not new, but it's going to take a lot of people by surprise. It's going to shock a lot of people that haven't done their homework or that haven't actually consolidated their businesses and are only basing, you know, their business or whatever activities they're doing on Facebook. And it's not your fault. It's not anyone's fault. 
Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for tuning in. Gavin Hogans, thank you so much for tuning in. Guys, it's not anyone's fault. I, 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 I sincerely sympathize with a lot of people because Facebook has made it that they own the rest of the internet. All right, they have made it that, um, you know, everything that goes into or through the internet passes through them. All right, they created this on their quest to become the one stop shop for everything on the internet. All right, now what does what what did this do um, to the rest of everyone else? They first of all don't want you to leave the, the, the you know, the, 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 the news feed. All right, so that's why they're, they're swallowing and controlling where everybody else has to go. You know what? A few years back, I think when Facebook started, that was in February of 2004. And if you really calculate it, Facebook has just turned 13. And that just makes them a teenager. All right? That in, 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 in human words or in human, um, you know, you know in, in human years, they had just became a teenager. All right, what happens when somebody is a teenager? Tough. Debbie Agoshawan. Brandon, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. What are the symptoms of when somebody becomes a teenager? Andres Martinez, thank you so much for tuning in. You know, when when somebody becomes a teenager, especially if they're a boy, I'm speaking because from, from my own experience, I was a teenager at some point. They become sad and hopeless. You know, they become irritable. They become angry. They become hostile usually tearful and frequently crying. Do you know what I mean? They withdraw from friends and family, which is what Facebook is, is going through right now. Had it been a small boy, they just turned 13. So that shouldn't deter you or, you know, that shouldn't stop you from actually progressing and having a business that's profitable and enjoyable just because Facebook is just being a teenager that does not understand their feelings right now. All right. What what is happening is once you want to start a business online, you want to make sure that you've got a message that goes to a specific market and whatever media you choose, whatever media you can use, that can vary. There's been companies that have been there for a while. Coca-Cola, McDonald's, KFC, uh, Ford Motor Company, Apple, Microsoft, IBM. All of those big companies, they survived a long time, way before Facebook was even uh, conceived in 2004. All right. So that shouldn't stop you from going ahead with your business just because your um, audience is no longer seeing what's happening in, um, you know, you're no longer seeing your posts in the newsfeed. All right. Now, there's a few things that you've got to do. There's a few things that you've really got to consolidate if you haven't done this yet. Certain steps that you can take so that you don't make Facebook your ultimate, you know, um, uh, stop or ultimate destination for your for the success of your own business. Right now, Facebook doesn't care about businesses. Right now, Facebook doesn't care about, you know, publishers or things like that. They are just pushing through a new standard of transparency where they have new news feed values. All right. And what does that mean? Friends and family come first in the newsfeed. All right. So if you're not somebody's friend and if you're not somebody's family, you are being thought of as spamming that particular individual because they want to make sure that the newsfeed is there to inform and to entertain. Now, is the content that you're putting out there as an individual or as a business, is it informing or is it entertaining? If it's none of that, if it's causing trouble or if it's causing, you know, you know, your hardship in other people's existence, then that's the reason why your posts are not going to be shown in the newsfeed. All right. So it's, it's one of those things. First of all, just be a kind human on, online. That would also put you in front of people in the newsfeed. I went in and I studied a little bit about the, the algorithm and that's the reason why it's, it's, it's so hard, no matter how you try to not see my content. There's a, there's a, there's, there's a formula that you got to follow. It's interest, right? The, the interest part of, of the formula is who, who is the person who has created that, that post? Who is the creator of that post? What 
interest level does that person have? What societal social proof does that person have? All right? If you've got a higher index that people actually like your stuff, there are higher chances that people will see your content in the newsfeed. All right? There's also post. What is the performance of this post? How, many, how long did it take for the first person to like this post? The algorithm measures that as well. So as soon as you post something and, and the first three seconds nobody likes it, that post is already deemed as dead. So it's like a, a three to 12 second window. And then it goes to the C, which is the creator. The performance of the post is also uh, judged on the previous content that the, the creator has put out. And what type of post is it? Is it a video? Is it a photo? Is it a status? And, and is the person that is putting out this content, is he a one-click wonder or are they continuously putting content out there? And the recency of the post, how recent is that post that that person just put out? So if your last post is probably three, four weeks ago, don't expect your new post to get any traction. You know why? Because Facebook is going to think that people don't like your stuff. All of those things are things that you can weave into your day-to-day -day usage of the platform. Like I say, it is a platform. It shouldn't be the be it and end all for your business. And with the recent news that they might actually stop showing, um, you know, Facebook pages in, in, in the, in the newsfeed, that shouldn't come as, uh, as a, you know, as a, as, as, as a threat to small businesses. Because there's things that you can do behind the scenes. Make sure that your message is married to your market. Whatever media you're going to use is going to vary. And I gave an example of companies like Coca-Cola or Ford or companies like Microsoft, IBM. They existed a long time ago before February 2004 when Facebook um, you know, was made public or when Facebook started uh, being uh, functional. So if you're calculating backwards, it just tells you that Facebook is just a teenager who's only just trying to figure out their own emotions. So you shouldn't let your business be directed by, um, you know, somebody who's just trying to figure out their own emotions. All right. As a business person, you should be prepared for what's about to come. All right. There's a few things that you can do simply just so that you make sure that you are relevant in the next year to come. First of all, fig figure out, figure out, you know, what your, um, what need you are, you are feeling. Second of all, figure out what, um, who needs those services that you're putting out. And once you've got all of that in place, you want to make sure that people understand your message. You already have a market that people, um, you know, that you, you, you're ready to sell to. And once you start putting content out there and making sure that people are aligned to your visions, to your goals and aspirations, all of what I'm talking about will, you know, you know, will all come together. So how do you do this? All right. First of all, most of us don't even have a website. A lot of big business people had thought that, you know, starting a business only means having um, a, a, a Facebook page. You know? How many of how many people are operating right now, you know, just from a Facebook page? Because if you are, then obviously you haven't been making money for the last six months. All right. Because at the end of the day, if you haven't created an audience, all right, if you haven't built that audience and you haven't been passing, um, you know, content to them, then that means those people have never heard about you. So once you have a website and some sort of a landing page that collects all the information that says who you are, what you stand for and what your values are, that should be used as a way to engage people. That should be used as a way to educate the patrons that come through to your website. That should be used as a way to inspire people to purchase your products. And it should be a way to position yourself as the go-to person within your industry. All right. So I, I don't know if um, if anyone has been affected so far by by the Facebook um, you know algorithm change. Have you been affected by the way Facebook has changed the algorithm? Ha has that affected you um, in in any way? Because most people that have been affected is people um, th that um, 
What does Scott say? Scott says people should see the real person behind the business. Exactly. That is absolutely because people buy from people. All right. So if your business is not showing your your true authenticity, if your business is not showing your true, um, you know, need to want to actually help people by actually helping them, it's going to be difficult for anyone to actually want to make any purchases or buy anything from you. All right. So a lot of people had been hiding behind a Facebook page and just posting, 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 like copying and pasting. I think Facebook now no longer likes that. Yeah, because its whole business model is built around entertaining and informing, um, you know, the, 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 the normal person. So if your information out there is not entertaining, is not informing, then you're not doing anyone a service or a favor. All right. So there's certain things that you can you can literally do in order for you to bypass the whole, um, you know, Facebook saga that's happening right now. Find out what other platforms are your clients present at. What other platforms can you reach your customers from? All right, because if, if, if Facebook now stops you from reaching out without you paying, it's going to be difficult for anyone to know who you are. Find to know what your product is, to know what your services are, or for you to actually correspond with people to find out what frustrations do they have that your pro pro product can fix. You know, how many other alternatives are you using in your business? Do you have a blog that people can go to so they can get information? Have you got a list, you know, a list of people's email addresses that you have been um, curating before in order for them, um, you know, to for you to send emails out if you've got a campaign? See, it's all those small things that really need to be done in order for you to have a business that is profitable and enjoyable. You know, it's, it's that simple these days. So I, I just saw in the morning that they're going to be, um, you know, changing the algorithm and stuff like that and making sure that friends, friends and family are the only people that are going to be prevalent in the newsfeed and, um, you know, businesses are going to be seen in the explore tab. But for you to counter that, you need to make sure that you have ways to just use Facebook as a traffic generation site. All right. And, and Sean says Facebook and Amazon have both proven to favor their core audience, which is the people over businesses. This makes perfect sense because businesses are more willing to adapt to changes. Oh, exactly. I mean, you're absolutely right there. Because at the end of the day, if if they they are just data generating, um, you know, companies. So what you do when you're purchasing ads or whatever it is, you're not going there to get people to buy your stuff. You are going there to purchase data that you can then utilize in your campaigns. I don't know if you understand that logic, because if you understand it that way, that you are not going in to Facebook to get people to buy your stuff. You are only going there to borrow data or to borrow leads from there that you can then send your campaigns out. You will have actually a, a, a profitable business. You know why? Because you have the least expectations. Remember, when people are on Facebook, they're not specifically waiting for your um you know, for, for your offers, they're not specifically waiting for you to start talking to them. They're not specifically stopping what they're doing in order for you to, to reach them. You know, in fact, you know, um, the, the, the normal user on Facebook is out there to connect with their relatives. And Sean says also we need the need for relevant and meaningful content is more important than ever since you know, your potential fans and customers are more likely to share your posts, which places your content higher up. Of course, that is it. If you are relevant, like I said earlier on, if your content is informing and if your content is educational, because that's the reason why people come to the Internet. People are coming to the Internet to get information. Now, if your information is um, I mean, if you're the person that's providing that content, you know, like what Sean is saying, 
you, they get to know, like, and trust you. And the more they get to know, like, and trust you, it's easier for you to then cultivate or take them off of the platform and bring them across, um, you know, to whatever channel you might have. And in this case, the best bet is creating assets like a list. All right. Now, how many people have a list that they, um, you know, they base all their information on? Over here, how many people do actually have a list? Hmm? Do you have a list in your business that you use or do you just hope and pray that maybe, you know, the people that you are trying to reach out to on Facebook um, will either talk to you or something like that? Hmm? Are you actually using Facebook as a traffic source or are you using it as your, um, you know, way to, to get leads? So if, if there's something that you can actually, um, you know, if there's something that you can start doing really is start giving people value and exchange that for an email address. All right. Once you do that, when people come across to, to you, you then, um, you know, start sending them offers and then they get to know you, 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 you're sort of, um, 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 nurturing that list. All right. Because if you're not using social media as a lead generating facility, if you're not using social media as a way to garner or get leads, then I think you're missing out on a, on a lot of potential that Facebook is actually meant for. Okay? Because now if they, you know, take the rug off of our feet, it's going to be difficult. Some businesses are going to go bust. This happened before. It's not the first time that, you know, a piece of media just, you know, becomes maybe obsolete or becomes or, or just puts up the, 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 the bar to entry. You know, the only reason people were allowed to, um, you know, make uh, Facebook pages was because when when a few years back, you know what I mean? Um, you know the news feed was filled with links and people were just being told to leave, um, you know, the Facebook news feed. And Facebook didn't want that. Do you know what I mean? And then they also decided that people were not getting a good user experience as soon as they got to other people's pages. You know? People were, were, were forced to endure, you know, hard load times. There were extra clicks to get to what they wanted. And heaven forbid, there was a lot of typing for them to enter some vaults where content was located. And each of each link that was being put on Facebook was actually an opportunity for them to, 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 to lose a person that would have been enjoying, um, you know, the, 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 the walls or whatever it is they were putting out there. So it was all thwarting the mission and, and as well as Facebook, Facebook's business model. So they already just started eliminating the reason um, for anyone to ever want to leave, um, you know, the, the, the algorithm there or to leave them, you know, to leave the, the whole uh, setup. So you want to make sure that if you're going to be creating something that people are going to go to, all right, make sure um, your, your load times on the Facebook, on, on, on your websites are not, I mean, are user friendly. People are not going to be waiting hours and hours for your for your page to load. All right. Make sure you don't have too many clicks. As soon as somebody lands on your um, as soon as somebody lands on your landing page, don't get them to go through hoops because right now they can get all the information they want freely just by scrolling. All right. And don't let people have to type or input a lot of information. You know why? Because right now Facebook has made it easy for people to just, you know, opt into certain, um, you know, uh, landing pages because they've already pre-populated that information. So there's a lot of work that you've got to do behind the scenes to make sure that when customers come to your website, it's, it's as user friendly as possible. You know, if anyone wants any help with any of this stuff that I'm talking about, I... Yeah, me and my team are more than happy to take a look at what you have right now um, and see how far you're going to go, you know, especially with the way the tables have turned with um, the Facebook algorithm there. All right. The Internet has become a messy, messy, messy place to be. 
you know? Back in 2007, Facebook started off in 2004, and then I think pages were introduced in 2007. Do you know what I mean? The team actually saw that websites had become messy and they became inconsistent. So you want to make sure that when somebody lands on your page coming in from wherever they're coming in from, because it's not easy to get people to come to your website. So as soon as somebody lands, they find exactly what they want. Either it's a video they see or the information they came from. Because if they don't see it, they're going to just bounce off. And it's going to be hard for you to actually make any strides or make any business if Facebook is not letting you get seen in the news feed. All right? So you want to make sure that your websites are not too clacky. Um, clangy or what's the word for it? They're not too messy. They, people don't have to jump through hoops in order to input an email address, you know, and everything is working in the back end. You deliver on your promises. All right. Otherwise, if you don't want that, then you have to start paying Facebook to be seen. So what would you rather have? I mean, a lot of people might ignore this show today. You know why? Because they don't want to hear the hard truths, but it's coming. That's exactly what's happening. So you want to tie up all the loose ends on your, on your website. You want to make sure the copy on your website is converting. You want to make sure that when you say you're going to deliver, um, you know, a, a, a lead magnet or whatever it is, it actually does go to, to the person's email, um, email um, in inbox. You know, and those people that had crafted themselves in jobs as social media managers. Maybe it's time to diversify your skills. You know, because maybe this job might not be existing in the next years. But maybe it's all just speculation. You never know with these things. But once once tests are being done, it means it's something that has been set down. They have thought about it and they've discussed it and they've actually thought it's something they should do. You know why? Every single day, Facebook is bombarded with, with you know suggestions from people on how to do things and seldom do they implement. But when they implement, it means something is coming. So if you are listening to any of these shows, you really want to make sure you've got your website um, you know, um, ready for when this happens. Make sure it's mobile friendly. All right? Make sure when people click on it, that it doesn't take long to load. It doesn't... Um, you know, it's it's just not too messy, all right? And if you really want to see if your SEO is, is doing all right, I have a free SEO check, um, you know, tool that's on my website, www.livelongdigital.com.au. You can just go on there and have your website checked for free, all right? So that you can check if it's mobile friendly, you can check on it's responsive, because then it also measures how long it takes for somebody to, um, you know, to open that page, etc., etc. Some people are going to cry foul. Some people are going to boycott Facebook. But you know what? Life just goes on. All right. So it's up to you to actually pull up your socks and, you know, start fixing your back ends. Start making sure that all the products that you promise, um, you know, you're delivering them. Start making sure that your copy is legit. Start making sure that your website is actually... Um, um, start making sure that your website is, you know, is user friendly and uh, mobile friendly as well. And you're delivering on the promises because from now on, people are not going to be seeing whatever you post from your page. And guess what Facebook had done? They had made it so beautiful for people to present their mediocre stuff. Yeah, you had a profile picture. You had all the things. It was just plug and play. But maybe they're tired of pulling, um, you know, uh, the weight of people that are not doing much in order to actually fulfill their promise. So what does that leave? It leaves you to go back to your website. It leaves you to actually start working on your business. It leaves you to actually start crafting your message. It leaves you to actually start looking for your market and also figuring out other ways to get traffic, which is whatever media is out there. So now... This is an exciting time for digital marketing. You know why? All of these things, we are just ready. Facebook is just a tool.
All right. So if you haven't been doing stuff, you haven't been doing much with your business, just hoping that your Facebook page would one day turn around and become your money making, um, you know, tool. I'm afraid that's about to uh, become a thing of the past. All right. So you want to make sure that you have everything in place. You've created, um, you know, enough content for when your audience has come through because people are coming to the Internet to get information. How are you prepared as a business person to provide that information for when they want it? And for those of you that never indulged or never, you know, got gotten themselves or their feet wet in Facebook uh, pages, kudos to you. All right. I'm not saying that this is the end of it all, but then they have started testing so much that if you're going to be found in the explore field, I don't know, you you got to be some sort of a ninja marketer that people are liking your stuff, are commenting on your stuff and are actually enjoying your content. So for other small businesses, if the Facebook page was the only hub that you use to communicate with your customers, I think you need to find and explore other channels, find out where your customers are, maybe LinkedIn or maybe transfer and start being present with your, um, you know, with your own profile. Because now things are about to change. Things are about to look east or a bit sour. All right. I'm more than happy to um, help you out through this time of when, you know, everybody else is confused. Okay. I don't want to be the devil's advocate. You can look this stuff up. It's definitely going to, um, um, you know, it's definitely going to help you uh, get ready for 2018. You know why? I'm passionate about things like this because I want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I want you to enjoy working in your business and actually make that profit. And if Facebook decides they don't want to carry you through, we're always going to be looking for newer and um, exciting uh, things that we can use in order for us to be, do and have businesses that we actually enjoy. Robert, thank you so much for that uh, comment. I really, really um, want to be of value and I really want to be that one person people can rely on to give, um, you know, the content that is uh, suitable. And if you want me to have a look at either your website, your landing pages or whatever collateral assets that you have that you're going to be using to make money um, off in 2018, just type in um, coffee so we can have a virtual coffee date. What that means is we sit down, I just have a look at your stuff, I look at your market, I look at your message, I look at the media channels that you can utilize and also other ways that we are, um, you know, cutting through the noise either on, on social media or just in the internet in general, okay? At the end of the day, thank you so much uh, for everybody else who's been watching and everybody else who's been supporting us. Maybe you won't get to see a lot of, um, you know, my stuff, but if you... Um, um, if you uh, click C first, um, you know, on the friends list there, I'm always here to help out those people that are struggling with their business. I want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day.